The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. Project Daddy in the motherfucking building. Hands up, hands up to the goddamn ceiling. The greatest American alive. You, not me. I'm a piece of shit, but I'm getting really, really angry. I'm lying. I've been angry at the American politician and the American de facto representation treating the American person like a piece of shit. De facto representation. Have you heard this term? What is de facto representation? Right now in this consumer economy that we have with so much media, we have great people, great shows and great representatives who have not been elected into office. But since their platforms are so huge and we give them so much of our energy and so much of our viewership, they're speaking for us. Now these people, once they make so much money and generate so much wealth, they have the ability to go and spend time with the elites and talk to politicians and rub shoulders with some of the most powerful people in the world. And when they come back to us, I think it's their fucking sworn duty as great patriots to America to give back to the American person with information that can change the quality of their motherfucking life, not to regurgitate information and sound like a goddamn parrot. That bothers me. That fucking bothers me. Information from somewhere else that doesn't specifically apply to the American citizen. There are things that mean something. Capitalism has been a mechanism that's created tremendous wealth for the American person, the American society. It's evident. Look at us. We are fucking a tiny percent of the global population, but we have all this goddamn wealth. But what are we doing with it? I have this silly story. It's a silly story. It's a terrible story, a horror story, actually, of a giant Dennis the Menace. Big six foot three redhead, freckles, glasses, steroids. Dennis the Menace on motherfucking steroids. Now, I met this man when I was in the military. and He told me how he'd go to strip clubs. And the drinks at the strip club were too expensive. And so he didn't want to buy drinks from the strip club. And so he'd stand outside with 40 ounces of Mickey's. And he'd pound the Mickey's. Ah, pound the Mickey's. And once he was done pounding the Mickey's, he'd throw the glass bottle on the floor. Boom. Busting glass bottles. Just recklessness, recklessness, yes. And then once he was about 340 ounces in, three of these Mickeys, he go into the strip club. And according to this giant size, still roared and huge, Dennis the Menace, he told me he'd have a pocket full of quarters. And he would just throw quarters. He'd say, dance, bitch, dance. And throw quarters at these wonderful women who are out there trying to make a living to feed themselves and their families. But this giant size, redhead, Dennis the Menace had no care or no value for these wonderful people that were just trying to provide for themselves and having some type of dignity to make sure that they worked for a living. No, instead of valuing these beautiful women, he wanted to throw change at them. And that's how I feel about the American population, these politicians and de facto representations, de facto representatives. They're just throwing change at you as they sit in their elite lofts way up at the top of the, the palatial estates. Slamming their fucking Mickeys. Of course, their Mickeys cost 10 times more than a 40 ounce of Mickeys. Probably 100 times more than their 40 ounce of Mickeys. Drinking Dom Perignon and Ace of Spade as you're sitting down here drinking motherfucking water that's been infected with all types of E. coli and bacteria and things. I'm just saying. These individuals are throwing change at the American population in the greatest nation that has ever existed financially, economically. By the citizen, goddamn manifest destiny, we can accomplish anything. The do right nature of American exceptionalism. But for somehow, for some reason, we won't invest in people the way they deserve to be invested in. America knows how to create wealth. I don't care if you want to go to the Homestead Act where they said motherfuckers need land. Go get land. And once they had some fucking land, they created motherfucking land grant colleges. So these people learn how to work the land. They created wealth from nothing. What entitlement? The entitlement to have the ability to live and provide for yourself. This is the American way. This is the American dream. And no one's asking the American person what they want. I don't care what kind of motherfucking poll that you have. I don't care what kind of questions you ask. Do you like health care? Do you think health care should be free? What would you do to have free health care? 
Once you drive a narrative and create a narrative, then all of a sudden you think that that's the only goddamn option. And you'll say in a motherfucking in a nation like ours with so much goddamn money that health care is a universal right and that every person should have health care. But when you say these things and you espouse this rhetoric to me as an American citizen, it bothers the fuck out of me because how in the fuck can I go to the doctor when I can't even go home? Why can't I go home? Because I don't own no motherfucking home. I can't go to a place that doesn't exist, but I can go to a goddamn doctor. We love to invest in institutions in America, but we refuse to invest in the individual. And that's some wild ass shit. It's a trend that I'm starting to see and that murder of the American person has been normalized through the glitz and glamour of Hollywood and through the political rhetoric of our politicians. What do you mean? How has murder been normalized? Listen to any politician that give a speech. They'll talk about war and, uh, and, and forwarding the uh, imperialist agenda. We're going to send 20,000 troops here. We're going to send 70,000 70, troops there. Those troops aren't coming home. Oh, Iran is being an aggressor. And every time you listen to a statement like this, there are things that you should listen for. They are going to spend money on someone else's economy and not on you. Every time you hear a politician talk about some type of military action, they're talking about spending money. There are only two things that matter in the capitalist nation that's spending motherfucking money and making some goddamn money. And politicians want to spend a whole lot of money on everything else except for you, the greatest American alive. It bothers the shit out of me. And when it comes to the glitz and the glamour of Hollywood, how does Hollywood normalize the murder of the American citizen? I don't know. Let's, let's go watch any superhero movie. Let's watch any Avengers movie. And as these superheroes are flying around, doing their thing, being all heroic and shit, you're seeing buildings being crashed. You're seeing cars turned over. And as a logical, reasonable person, you know that there are people inside of these cars. You know there are people inside of these buildings. But fuck American life. Let those bodies fall however they may. Let these buildings topple. Let these cars blow the fuck up for cinematic effect. And through being... They're being direct, letting you know that the individual doesn't matter. The hero has to save the world and fuck you, American citizen. Fuck you, great patriot. I don't care if you drive a Hyundai Sonata or a Cadillac or a Bentley. When the world needs to be saved, you are expendable. The politician doesn't give a shit about your son or daughter or father or husband or whomever these people are to you by relation when they serve for the United States military. You hear me? As soon as they start talking about war and military action, they're speaking on spending money and allowing American bodies to American people to die. Allowing American bodies to come home to their families and they put a flag on top of them and they say they they did their patriotic duty. To protect the empire. But the patriotic duty isn't to protect the empire, it's to, it's to protect the American citizen. This is why the military exists. This is why politicians exist. Not to make sure that America grows to be as big as fuck, but to make sure that you can have your basic human rights. What's a basic human right? The ability to provide for yourself, to have a place to stay, to have some food. And then once you have these basic needs in life, some clothes on your motherfucking back, then maybe you can aspire to have something more better. But there ain't nothing more better than having a home to call your own. We're playing in the face of the American people. They're throwing change at you because they do not value you. And it's every politician and every elected person and every de facto representative, representative's person. It's their duty to represent you. And what the fuck is going to make the American person as great as they can ever possibly be? Home ownership. We know this 1934, they created the Federal Housing Administration. Why? Because they knew that the American person shelter is a human right. If you don't have a place to stay, then your health care and your financial well-being is going to erode because you're throwing all your dollars to landlords that don't give a shit about you. Man, the United States of America, the, the federal government owns land, and there are American citizens that, own, that there are American citizens that do not own any land. 
motherfucker gets so excited because when I look at how we spend money and we won't spend money on making sure that we protect the most disadvantaged persons in our society, man, what the fuck? Project housing is one of the most despicable things any person could ever think of. When it came to people who were economically sound, they wanted to create wealth for these people and eliminate homelessness. And so they said, you should have access to capital, zero to 1% home loans to make sure they create suburbs and a middle class for sustainable living. And all of a sudden, once these people have something to call their own, they're investing, they're paying taxes, they're buying cars, they're buying furniture, they're buying fucking refrigerators and washers and dryers and putting their kids in private school because they have the ability to generate wealth. And then when it comes to the most disadvantaged people in our society, we'll say, man, fuck that shit. We don't want to give you a pathway to create wealth. Have a project building. Go live in an apartment and spend all of your financial wealth and all your financial means into giving someone else something when you get nothing in return. And we know this is a fucked up situation. But instead of focusing on what's the most important thing for the American person, the thing that you need, your basic necessity, it's a home to call your own. They won't even think about you. They won't even lift a finger to help you. These people will not come together to work with other individuals to make sure that you can have a viable future, that you're a fully vested citizen of the United States of motherfucking America. This thing to me represents a geographic location. We all live on this motherfucking place and so we should all reap the benefits from this thing in which we create. Motherfucker, every time you swipe your card, every time you go to the store, every time you buy gas, every time you eat some unhealthy thing or smoke a motherfucking cigarette, you are putting money into this economy. You're growing this motherfucker, and that's valuable. The American citizen is extremely, extremely, and exceptionally valuable. Whether you're participating in this thing and having a job or not, someone is profiting and making money off of you. These are facts. And so when we talk about capitalism and generating in generating wealth and spending this capital, generating capital and spending capital is in the goddamn name of fucking capitalism. Just maybe, just maybe, the American person who is generating all of this motherfucking capital should have a say in how this capital is spent. Just maybe, just maybe. The citizens that are willing to volunteer, to lay down their life for the freedoms of the American citizen, maybe, just maybe, these great, valiant, patriotic soldiers should have a say in the causes in which they live for in or die for. Should the military be a democracy? If the military was a democracy, then no one would volunteer to go and kill themselves but on the contrary, these 18-year-olds, these young people, they've already done it. As soon as they signed that contract on the dotted line and said that I will fight for and or protect this great nation, they've already given everything they could, their lives, to say that the American person is worth it. And as we spend this money, and as we move forward as a great nation, we have to ask, how can we be great if we don't have the goal of being great? And what kind of goals should a nation have if a nation can set goals? The legacy of America must be a civilization that turns its citizens into owners, fully vested members in their society. Let us not be the Egyptians who have pyramids built to the sky and we don't know who built them. Let your address and your home ownership of the place that you call your own be your testament to history that motherfucking the greatest American alive lived here. The greatest American alive lived here. I own something. When you come through the relics of this motherfucking dwelling a thousand years from now and you find these artifacts, you'll say, what kind of civilization did every goddamn citizen have a place to call their own? Amazing. Not skyscrapers to the sky that are built to honor capital and then monuments that are built to honor men who honored capital. But let America be a shining beacon of light of a monument that was built to this citizen and said that since you made this great nation, you shall reap the rewards of this great nation in which you built. Let's get motherfucking excited, man. We cannot allow the American citizen, the most powerful citizen that the world has ever seen, to die 
nameless and faceless as we build monuments to something that can create so much for so many people, but without building and reinforcing the American citizen, it's worthless. Just some people throwing change at the American fucking people. You deserve so much better. Financial freedom through ownership, God damn it. Actual empowerment by challenging the power system. Everything you do creates capital. And the moment they say that you're no longer valuable to yourself and, and they can use you. Legislation nation, we live in a law. We live in a land of laws. Legislation motherfucking nation. Where if the system, the government feels that you're not doing your due diligence or pulling your weight, then man, I'll send your ass to penitentiary. And then when I send you to the penitentiary, we're still going to spend money on you. And that tells you of your inherent value. Whether you do nothing or do something, the system knows that you are valuable. You can equate this shit, man. And so if you can invest in a penitentiary, if you can invest in a school system, then man, I'm just saying that you can invest directly into the American person. The system tells you what your value is. We can look throughout history and they're always, politicians are always investing directly into institutions and industries, but they're never bolstering the American citizen and pulling poor folk out of poverty, economically challenged people to a more prosperous position. No. You have the opportunity to go to school and you have the opportunity to go to the doctor, but you do not have the opportunity to call the place in which you lay your head your own. And going forward, this is what we're fighting for. This is what the rhetoric is. This is what the goal is. To turn the American citizen into an owner. And I don't give a fuck if you have a mortgage. That means you don't own that motherfucker. The bank does. The bank borrowed the money from somewhere and got a 1%, 0%, 2% interest loan on that motherfucker and gave it back to you at 8%. And they're profiting off of the, your want to have a place to stay. Tell the truth and shame the motherfucking devil. Tell the truth and shame the motherfucking devil. The American citizen is the most powerful citizen the world has ever seen. And once we start investing in the American citizen and stop despising wonderful Americans who are economically challenged by a system who doesn't value them and throws change at them, then we can reach the type of prosperity that we were designed to have. Motherfucking make America great. Immediately. Maggie, goddammit, it. Maggie. Project Daddy bringing you the truth directly from the motherfucking streets. I live amongst you. I understand the fucking struggle. And when you're in a struggle and you're in a tussle with a powerful person, you need a motherfucker that's willing to fight for in or die for the greatest American alive. You, not me. Project Daddy. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.